You know, I have a word that's burning in my spirit this morning. And I just ask you to bear with me. And I ask you to listen to what the Lord is saying. You know, I've entitled the sermon, The Word of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Because I believe this is the Word of the Lord. You know, as I was waiting and meditating on God, I was just thinking, you know, it's just you and your God. And the thoughts begin to come. And I begin to, to think about things. My thoughts begin to drift. And I'm looking at the world. And my spirit gets troubled by what I see. And then I'm, I'm, I'm led to go to the word of God. And I'm saying, God, I don't understand. In the book of Matthew, chapter 10, 19, you said you have given us power over all the power of the enemy. I don't understand what I read in the word and what I see around me. Something is not adding up. What is wrong, Lord? You gave us power to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to raise the dead. But I look around. We are unable to cast out demons. We are unable to heal the sick. Never mind raising the dead. And I'm saying, God, something is wrong. What is the problem? God, I know you are not a man that you should lie. And I know that your word is truthful. It is honest. So where is the problem? Because we are laying hands. And people are not recovering. We are rebuking and demons are laughing. What is the problem? What is the problem? You know, I, as I continue to, to think along those lines... For some reason, my thoughts changed and I went on to Google and I put the COVID-19 and a list of pastors who had died from COVID-19 popped up. And I said, you see God, this is what I'm talking about. I know I'm not the only one this morning who has been troubled by the events of COVID-19. I said, God, I don't understand. These men stood for the word of God. They preached and they said to the people, the blood of Jesus is sufficient. The word of God is sufficient. Trust in the Lord and lean not in your own understanding. And yet these men ended up dead. And some of their congregations ended up dead. I know this morning, this may be a sermon that not many people want to hear. But I want to challenge you this morning. Open the ears, open the eyes of your understanding. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the body of Christ this morning. Say, Lord, I don't understand what is going on. I ask myself, is there anything wrong with what they taught? No. Is there anything wrong with what they say? No. Is the blood of Jesus not real? It is real. Does the blood not provide protection? It does. So what went wrong? Where is the problem? Why? You know, I was wrestling with the Lord on this matter. I genuinely needed answers. And I, I know there are people out there like me who want answers. And the Lord says, come now, let us reason together. So I'm saying, God, I am reasoning with you. I need some answers. I need to know because my faith is being 
shipwrecked here. My senses being affected, I can feel the ground under my feet beginning to shake because I had hope and I had faith on the word, I had faith in the blood, I had faith on my protection and now I see my pastors dying and I'm wondering, oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, what has gone wrong? Is the blood not working? Are the scriptures not true? Is the word of God a lie? So, I'm talking with God and I'm wrestling with the Spirit. I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. God says, come now. Let us reason together. And I'm, I'm Lord, I'm reasoning with you here. I, I want some answers. And then, you know, it's, uh, I begin to think of David. You know, the day when David appeared in the battlefield. He found that the armies of God were hiding where the Philistines were boasting. And Goliath was standing there and said, send me a man. Send me a man. And David got up and said, well, I'm the man. And the rest of the people started to have hope. Because David comes in the name of the Lord, the commanders of the armies of Israel. David is speaking faith. And David is speaking word. Hope begins to, to come to the people. They say, the Lord has sent us a, a savior. David is going to fight for us. He knows what he's talking about. He's got boldness. He's got confidence. He's got everything that is needed. Then David walks towards Goliath, stands in front. Oh, wow. Goliath takes his sword, cuts off David's head. David falls dead on the ground. Whoa. Whoa. For those who don't know the Bible, that's not what happened. That's what I'm creating a picture for you. Because our Davids, our pastors, were cut off and they fell on the ground in front of David, in front of Goliath, which is COVID-19. And what happened? What would have happened if Goliath had killed David on that day? The people would have fled. The army of God would have fled in different directions and the enemy would have And I, I see this is something COVID has done. By killing so many pastors, by killing so many believers who were trusting, who were standing, who were claiming the word, who were claiming maybe Psalm 19 for their, for, for their protection and they died and they, and they say, God, you saved us. You will put none of their diseases upon us. Why are these diseases killing the church? And then the media, they come and they say, Pastor so and so preached, there was no COVID, you don't need vaccines. Now he's in hospital dying of COVID, oh he's dead. And next this one, and next this one, and next this one, and then the babies in the Lord. The people who are not mature enough, they start saying, well, this church thing, it doesn't work. And they drift away to different things. And those that were standing, their crown is shaken, their faith is shaken, they are still there, but their hearts are fearful. If God couldn't protect his servant, what hope do I have? That's the question. Hmm. What hope do I have? And the Lord opened my eyes. You know the beauty is that God says, ask and what? You shall receive. Ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and the door will open. Seek and you will find. Now I was asking and I wanted answers. God opened my eyes. What did I see? When my eyes were open, I looked at the body of Christ in 
general. And I saw a very eloquent church. A very eloquent church. A church with so much knowledge, so much skill. There are so many professionals. We know how to preach just right. We know how to motivate people just right. We know how to, to, to excite them just the right level. We know when to pull the right strings. And I saw a church. A church. Whew. I saw a church that has gone so deep without God. A church that has gone so deep without God. Because our own imagination carried us. Our own opinions carried us. Our professionalism has carried us. That we began to build without a builder. We began to build without a foundation. We didn't need the Holy Ghost. We didn't need God. Because we were able to put our programs and our churches were filled up. We were able to put our programs and our worship would motivate people. We were able to draw crowds and that is all what we needed. We were looking for crowds. We were looking for followers. We were never looking for disciples. Amen. And I looked at the church today. How many people can truthfully say that I have faith because we do not know what the word faith means. We want to wake up and command our mornings. We want to wake up and take over God's place and be God of our own selves. We want to wake up and do what is right. We name it, we claim it, and it's ours. Where is God in it all? Where is God in it all? And I went, whoa, whoa, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, we have prophesied our own opinions and the imaginations of our hearts. And we have supported one another, cemented our prophecies. We have deceived ourselves. And we went and God allowed us to go that far. But unfortunately, Jesus is coming back again. The day of the Lord is at hand. And God is preparing his church. And God is preparing his bride. He cannot come when the bride is the way the bride is. Lost out there in the sea of people. Hallelujah. Oh, I tell you, what has happened? Now COVID-19 came, just like David's story I told you about. Our Davids crumbled and they fell. And the church is left confused. Is this the end of the world? Is this the, the mark of the beast? Is the vaccine the 666? Should we be taking it? Should we not be taking it? Is Jesus around the corner? What is going on? And I ask myself, God, why are we confused? Why is the church confused? Why are we going this way and that way? Why are we being tossed to and fro? Why don't we know where we are going? Why are we lacking direction? Because in God, is no confusion and it says my people know my voice and I lead them and they follow me so if he is leading and we are following what is the problem why are we confused why are we afraid hallelujah hallelujah confusion that's why the Bible says, if the foundations be broken, what must the righteous do? We need to go back to the fallen foundation. We need to go back to the ancient paths to dwell in. We need to go back where we first saw the light. We need to acknowledge that something is wrong. People, let me tell you, COVID-19, <laughs> it has come as a shaking 
to the world and not only to the world but to the church itself and I ask myself a question if the church had watched them on the walls if the church had gatekeepers on its gates if the church had generals in the army why why are we confused why are we where we are today what happened did God not know that COVID was going to put the whole world to a standstill but did not the churches have a program a full program for 2020 did not the prophets tell us God is saying it's going to be a good year 2020 did we not put our programs for evangelism our programs for this and our programs for that we had fully planned 2020 and yet God knew that 2020 was never going to happen because the whole world would be in quarantine the whole world would be at a standstill why didn't our prophets see it? Why didn't our generals hear from God, the commander of the army? Why did they lead us into a battle that, that we lost so many of our soldiers? Why did they, they give us instructions that have brought death to our people? Because they were not hearing from God. Because they were not hearing from God. I want to tell you, there were some people who didn't hear from God, but their voices were too little to be heard by anybody. Because there were those who have been put on pedestal as the spokespeople, as God's generals, as God's watchmen and God's gatekeepers. They were the ones that were talking, and they were the ones the world was listening to, and they were the ones that missed God. They missed God. And uh, as I'm meditating, I begin to see, why did we miss God? We missed God. I'm, I'm not here to condemn any man. I'm not here to condemn any prophet. I'm just telling it as it is. This is the word from the Lord. They missed it. We missed it because, I'll tell you, for years, the prophets have prophesied and no man has judged their prophecies. For years, they have said things that have never happened and no one has questioned. When one gets up to say something, the others come to confirm and cement it and everybody says, Amen. Nobody has challenged. And as the years went by, they began to believe their own prophecies. They began to truly believe they were being hearing from God. They began to truly believe they were being led by the Spirit of God. But God has come to a time when enough is enough and God allows COVID-19 to come into the scene to expose the body of Christ, to expose the church from the falsehood that we are walking in, from the false that we are walking in I dare say today the church has been exposed by a loving God by a loving God why is God why has God exposed the church because Jesus is coming the day of the Lord is at hand and he's got to destroy the works of the flesh he's got to destroy the bubbles that we have built he's got to destroy everything that is built by the hand of man that he may establish his kingdom here on earth that he may build his church which the gates of hell will not prevail against COVID has exposed the weaknesses highlighted the cracks in our walls COVID has highlighted you know, the errors in the church. And I believe God is saying, it is time for the body of Christ to repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time for the church to repent. It's time for the church to repent. It's time for the church to repent. In this season, God is doing a work. And the work that God is doing has left the church unstuck. Unstuck. 
exposed. Psalm 25 verse 14 The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. You know, when God was going to destroy Sodom, what did he do? He said, shall I hide from Abraham, my friend, what I'm about to do? No, I cannot do it. And he told Abraham, Abraham had a chance to stand in the death and intercede. Why is it that when something as terrible as COVID-19, which shut the whole world down and brought the whole world to a standstill? Listen to me. I don't care whether COVID was man-made or not. That's not the point. It is still of the devil. Whether it's man-made or it's a natural disease, it is still killing people. And that's all we need to know. So it's not the argument that it's a man-made thing. They did it in the labs. I don't, I'm not interested in that. What I'm interested in is the outcome of COVID. It has exposed the church. It has brought the church to an open place where the world is now looking and saying, Hey, what happened here? What happened here? Where the believers inside the church are now questioning their beliefs. Hmm. First Thessalonians 5, verse 3 to 7 says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. And I dare say, the day did overtake the church as a thief. Why did the day overtake us as a thief? Because we were walking in darkness. Yeah. We were walking in the light of our own making. And when true darkness came, our light became darkness. We got exposed. Hmm. We got exposed. Hallelujah. God wants the church to repent of all falsehood. God wants the church to humble itself and admit to God, we have gone so far and left you so behind. You know, then I was taken to Second Chronicles chapter 7. We love this scripture, don't we? Verse 13 and 14. God says, if I shut up heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, is called it a pestilence. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Hallelujah. If I bring pestilence to the land, if I allow pestilence on the land, and when people begin to die, remember Israel, when the serpents begin to bite them, they had to go and look up to the serpent on the, on the pole. That was a sign of humility, admitting that I'm defeated. <clears throat> now I want you to see something very important. I was looking at the death of Uzzah. I gave you an example of David. Do you know when you read the story of David, bringing the presence of God back to the nation, and you see Uzzah die. Did you never think that was unfair? Well, maybe I'm the only unrighteous one here. I thought, God, this is unfair. You should have killed David. He's the instigator. What has this poor man done? He was only trying to help so that the act doesn't fall. 
Should he have let you fall down in the presence of your enemy? God, he was only giving a lending hand. Why did he have to die? But I did not understand there were deeper consequences. The Musa from the lineage of priesthood, he knew the truth about the, the way the ark was supposed to be carried. But Musa held his peace and said nothing. But in his heart he was trembling. He was worried something would happen to the ark. And something did happen. And when it happened, he was foolish enough knowing that if you put your hand and touch the ark, he will die. But you know, in a moment, in an instant, he didn't even stop to think he touched it. God used him as an example for all Israel to see. And the death of Uzzah put fear. Fear among all the people that saw it. Did not the death of Ananiah and Sapphira put fear in the early church? Should not the death of all these pastors and their congregations put the fear of God in you and me? It is not about whether you took the vaccine or you didn't take the vaccine. You see, because the church got too taken up with the social media that we were, we were the forerunners for the social media. We were the forerunners of all the theories out there instead of listening to God, instead of hearing from God. We weren't hearing from God. We were repeating what social media is repeating. We were cutting and pasting to people. They are saying this vaccine is this. They are saying, what is God saying in it all? My people hear my voice. I lead and they follow. Those who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. They walk in the light. For thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. It is nothing about social media. Who led the church during this COVID thing? Social media. It was what the people out there were saying. We never heard what God, you know, I, I question, I say, God, I'm also guilty, I'm also a servant of God, so I'm not, I'm not judging anybody here. I said, God, why is that I, I'm not hearing a, a prophet telling people, that said the Lord. I'm not hearing anyone saying, no, people of God, what is saying this? All I'm hearing is chaos and confusion. Don't take, take, don't take, take, don't take, take. And in our confusion, people were dying. People were dying. If I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and repent of their wicked ways, David humbled himself. He repented and wept before God. He went and he went back to where? The foundation. And he read the law. And he came back fully prepared to do it God's way. Not to do it his way. And I believe the church has been doing it the Philistine way. We have been going and doing it the Philistine way until COVID became a breach like the death of Uza. And it's time we take stock. It's time like David, we go back to the foundation, go back to the beginning, go back to when you first saw the light and begin to question your walk. Where is God in my life? What role is God playing in my life? What role is the Holy Spirit playing in our church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the, the error has happened because nobody wants to be different. That's why when one prophet prophesies, all the others confirm because they don't want to be different. In the time of Micaiah, 400 prophets 
prophesied in unison. And yet God said there was a lying spirit within them. Only one man prophesied and nobody listened to him. They listened to the 400 lying prophets. We need to know that the time is here. The time is now when you got to dare to be different. When you got to dare to speak the truth. When you got to dare to stand against that which is not of God. And say I'm sorry with all due respect. But that is error. That is wrong. You know we have the fear of man more than we have the fear of God and the fear of man is a snare. I was just challenged to be honest. You know I was looking at the, the, the Abraham and I was challenged. I mean he lived in the time where the people in the land offered their children to their gods as sacrifice and God hated that. And one day God comes to Abraham. Go and sacrifice your son Isaac. What? Since when God? Did you start being like Molech requiring the sacrifice of children? Go and sacrifice to me your son Isaac. What would you have done? View in his shoes. We're talking faith here, church. The Bible says in the last days, the just shall live by their faith. And COVID has shown us we have no faith. I'm talking about biblical faith. Not what we have been taught out there. You see, the difference between us and Abraham was that he knew the voice of God. When God spoke to him, he had no doubt whatsoever in his mind that this was God talking. He only did not understand why God would demand such a thing. But he had no doubt this was God. And his faith was in the faith that although he did not understand this kind of a demand which went against the grain which God told him out of this child you are going to have descendants like the stars, like the same and now God is saying kill this child. And he said God from where I'm standing looks like confusion. From where I'm standing, something is not quite right. You are not the God to kill children for sacrifice. You are not the God who breaks covenant. But why are you asking me to do what you are asking me to do? The answer is, sacrifice your son Isaac to me. And so he went ahead because he trusted God. He believed God. The times are coming when you are going to find yourself in that position where you are going to have to know the voice of God, where you are going to have to know that you have heard from God, where you are going to have to stand with what you believe God is saying, not what everybody else is saying, not how everyone else is interpreting it, but the way you believe God is saying it, even though it doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, there was another time in Jeremiah where God sent the prophet Jeremiah to the king Hezekiah. And he says, this is what the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel says. If you surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, your life will be spared and the city will not be burned down and you and your family will live. <laughs> that didn't go down too well. What do you mean God wants me to surrender to the enemy? I know there are some pastors who paid heavily. 
when they told people to get vaccinated, they were vilified, called, you know, they have no faith, they, they are sellouts, they, they don't know what they are doing, they are not hearing from God. But suppose they did hear from God. Their people are still alive today. Their people are still living. And the ones who say they heard from God, they are six feet under. It's not about what it looks like. Church, we need to understand these things. We must be led by the Holy Spirit. It's not about the appearance of things. It's not about what the majority is saying. It is about what the Holy Spirit is saying. It is about what your spirit is agreeing with you. That's why the Bible says if your spirit does not condemn you, then you have peace with God. Yeah. Some some people took the vaccine and they're walking around feeling judged that they, they are now the antichrist. But some of the people who judged you, they're six feet under, died from COVID. I'm not God. I don't know what the answer is. I'm just telling you, the time is now when you must follow the leading of the Holy Ghost Amen. and not the leading of a man. God said to surrender to the enemy and the king says, why? They are going to abuse me. It was his fear of being abused that made the king not to trust the word from God. But God is saying, if you go and surrender, I will make sure that they protect you, they take good care of you. But if you do not surrender, you will pay for it and the city will be destroyed. And he said, don't tell this to anyone. Don't prophesy that word. Don't tell people, keep it quiet. You are going to confuse people. You are going to create problems. Just keep it to yourself. And Jeremiah went away. And they did not surrender. And they were taken captive. And they were abused. The thing that he feared the most came upon him. Because he chose to go with his fear rather than to trust God. There are times when you have to walk through the fire. But believe God, it will not burn you. There are times when you have to cross a flooded river and believe God, it will not carry you down the stream. There are times when you have to stand by faith and believe that God is in control no matter how the situation looks, no matter how the things appear in the natural, but we know that God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. Let us, go, let us go back as a people, as a church, the body of Christ. Let us listen to Second Chronicles. If I send the pestilence, if my people called by my name will humble themselves and repent. Let us not be like Israel, church. Hmm. Matthew eleven 17, I'm, I'm almost finished now. What does it say? We played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dinge and you did not mourn. Whew. We sang with pipe for you. We expected you to dance but you failed to dance. And then we sang a sad song. We wanted you to mourn. But again, you failed to mourn. What do you want from God? COVID has come. COVID has killed. COVID has devastated. Are we mourning? Or are we failing to mourn? Isaiah 19, what did Israel say? The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. Let's not have this attitude. Oh well, COVID will come and go. 
And all this will be history. People will forget all about the pastors who died. They'll forget about the, the, the Christians who died. They'll forget about the devastation that COVID-19 brought. We'll just rebuild our churches. We will reinforce the wrongs that we were doing before COVID came. We are going to strengthen our programs and make them stronger than they were before. That is error. That is mistake. God is saying, do not do like Israel. Do not harden your heart. Be like the people of Nineveh. Begin to weep. Call for a morning. Weep and pray and cry out, have mercy upon us, O God. Have mercy upon us, O God. For we are exposed. We have been exposed by COVID as the body of Christ. We need to get the Holy Ghost to come back. We need to go back to the scriptures. We need to go back to the foundation of the apostles. We need to go back to the doctrine of the apostles. We need to go back to the book of Acts. Because Jesus is coming and he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. He's coming for a virgin who has only with them. He's coming for a bride who has made herself ready. And right now the angel of the Lord is placing a marker on the foreheads of all those people who are mourning, who are weeping because of the evil that they see around them. For the time is coming when the angel will be done and then the angel of death will come back again. And he will kill and destroy everything that has no mark on it. Let me tell you, when you possess the mark of God on your life, no demon in hell can erase that. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So our fears, our fears are unfounded. Jesus said he'll never lose that which has been put in the palm of his hand. You can choose to step away. But as long as you have not chosen to step away, the devil can never put his seal on top of God's seal. He has not the power to steal what belongs to God. He has no power to take by force what belongs to God. He only takes that which accepts him. Because he, he lies to you. He deceives you in order to weaken you. And when you are in agreement with him, then he takes your soul in exchange for whatever your greed is asking for. But you cannot take those whom God has sealed by his Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. That is our salvation. That is our hope. That is our anchor. That for the sake of the elect, God will shorten the days so that those people with the mark will never be deceived. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I believe this is the word that the Lord has given me to share with believers this morning. We need to repent. As individuals, in our own right as an individual, I need to repent. I need to be clear what role I have assigned to the Holy Spirit in my personal life. I need to be clear what role I have assigned to the Holy Spirit in this church. I need to be clear what role the Word of God has in my personal life. I need to be clear what role the Word of God has in this church. We need to repent before it's too late. Let us not continue to walk in the stubbornness of our hearts. Let us not go back and rebuild the Bible that God has brought down. Let this be a turning point, a recognition by the church as the body that we are in error. We need to turn around and repent and cry out to God for mercy, mercy, mercy. Many are called but very few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. 
you have to choose this day. God is saying, see, I said before you, life. I said before you, death. Choose for yourself this day. Do you choose life or do you choose death? Nobody can make that choice for you. You have to make that choice for yourself. Let us bow our heads. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Almighty God. Father, we want to come before your throne. Father, we want to come as broken vessels, Lord. We acknowledge, my God, that we have come unstuck, Lord. We acknowledge, my God, that we have been exposed by a loving God. That, Lord, you have not exposed in order to destroy, but, Father, you have exposed, my God, in order to heal, in order to restore. Father, we pray, my God, for every person that is going to listen to this message, oh God. We pray for a conviction by the Holy Spirit, for he and he alone is able to convict us, my God. We pray that he will open the eyes of our understanding, that we may begin to see things through his eyes, Lord, and not see things through the eyes of the world, and not see things through the eyes of other people, and not even see things through the eyes of those who call themselves prophets, Lord. But we want to see things through the eyes of the Holy Ghost. My Lord and my God, we are crying out, my God, for yes, Father, we acknowledge your Father that, my God, we have what looks like church. We have, my God, a form of godliness, so we deny your power. Father God, we have a name that we are alive, and yet you say we are dead. Bravo yanda ya talaboyi, talaboye tele kavasanda. Mondo roko boye chacha ya cha, shirene besa karababa yodo. Rakiande reke baba, sharo boye tenda ni kere kera baba santa. Oh God in heaven. Be merciful, O God, and have mercy upon us, Lord. Open the eyes of our understanding, Lord, that we may see Jesus and see Him high and lifted up, O God. Have a Father, have a Father. Oh, Lord, give to us the grace that you gave to the people of Nineveh, O God. Father, that we may put on my God, that we may fast and weep and pray for our wickedness, Lord, which is great before you. Father, that times of refreshing may come upon us, Lord. That the Holy Spirit may come down, oh God, once again. Once again, oh God, once again, like the fire, my God. Once again, Father, once again, Lord. Father, 